obviously as we progress through the ages we actually get a bit of an increase in our road capacity and all that sort of stuff but i just thought we'd start and showcase the roads that we start out with and what we end up with at the end game as in the current year we're in now which is for instance june 14 2000 so without further ado let's get into it so in front of us right here we have the types of roads that we get given when we first start the game this is back at 1850 i think it was um so we can put that back there and back at 1850 and we're going to ignore the vehicles don't worry about those all right so back in 1850 if we go into our road section here now this this button here is our road tool and this brings up both the streets and the buildings that we use to interconnect our cities put our bus routes and truck routes in for delivery of passengers and also of goods so this is where we're going to do all the road work from now a couple of options here we have the streets we then have the street modification tool we have waypoints we have urban and we have country so the difference between the urban and the country straight off the bat is these are the urban roads as can be seen here the three of them here and then we have the country roads which are the dirt roads or gravel looking roads which are these three over here on the left hand side that's all well and good now let's have a look at these in detail so we'll start off with a small street so this one here is a small street two lanes with a speed limit of 20 kilometers an hour that's your stock standard small street that you use for your cities all that sort of stuff then we have a two lane street with a speed limit of 40 kilometers an hour so again very similar a little bit wider double the speed limit if you're using horse and cart that can't go any more than 12 kilometers an hour there's no real point upgrading all your roads to 40 kilometers an hour it will however be worthwhile upgrading once you get through the ages a little bit and you start getting faster transport trucks and buses etc etc all right and then we're left lastly with our large street which is a four lane street with a speed limit of 60 kilometers an hour and that's this jobby here okay now on the flip side and equal to those we have the small country road two lane road with a speed limit of 40 kilometers an hour we then have the medium country road the two lane road with a speed limit of 60 and we have a four lane road with a speed limit of 80. now as you can see the speed limits are different for the country and the city obviously so the city is 20 40 and 60 and the country is 40 60 and 80. okay makes sense without the country you have high speed limits all good all right what else do we have under the roads section in here well we have the modification tool now this modification tool will apply the tram tracks so not only have you got trucks and buses you've also got trams that's all well and good how do we get the trams on the track there's the tram station which we'll get to in a second then we want to add the tram track to our street now with doing this there's also options of having a catenary and no catenary so the catenary is the wires the electrical wires that go up above uh, the street and that's where the cart or the the um, carriage or whatever will draw its power from the same as what does with the train simply put when you've actually got the street modification tool enabled here all you have to do is click on the road and it will upgrade it to the tram tracks okay we clear that off now as you can see here we've got the tram tracks in the road okay and remember this is the four lane road that's why the tram tracks are over on the far side okay so that's all well and good so that's the tram tracks now that can be applied to any of these type of roads okay now come back in here the next option we have is we have a waypoint now a waypoint can be used when we're setting up a route instead of actually going and forcing it to go to a bus station or a truck or bus stop um, or whatever else we can actually use the waypoint when we're setting our route so for instance on this piece of road here i've got two waypoints set here i've got a bus stop and i've got a truck stop so if i was going to set up a route here i can actually say right i'm going to have a new line I'm going to start at the bus stop here and then I'm going to go to the waypoint here and then I'm going to go to this waypoint here and that's where the route will follow okay so that just means you can actually force the traffic or your bus or your truck or whatever to take a route other than what it's going to auto calculate otherwise it'll auto calculate its route handy little tip handy little tool so we have those obviously the other one is the bus stop and the truck stop so the bus stop your place to actually for your passengers to pick up and get off and your truck stop is for your delivering of goods and picking up of goods now another thing with the bus stop and the truck stop if i was to place a bus stop down here 
Now let's go back in here, buildings, our bus stop. If I was to place a bus stop down here, that's all well and good. I can then place another bus stop up here, all well and good. And it gives you the arrows of what direction it's picking the traffic up in. Now, if I was to go and then do a line on this, we go new line, it's going to come that direction to pick up the passengers because that's where the bus station is. It's on the right-hand side of the left-hand side of the roads we're looking at it now, coming to the south, and that's the way the traffic's going to go. However, if we were to instead put another bus stop directly opposite it, we've now got a bus stop on either side. Now, when I go to the route selection, and I cancel that out of there, you'll notice there's a difference. So this bus stop icon for the route is in the middle of the road. This one here is off to the side of the road. So this one here, it'll just go to whichever side suits the route best. So for instance, if I click on this one, I'm going to start my route there. I'm going to go to here. Okay, it's going to come up, it's going up that way because of that route, that tramps bus stop, sorry. And it's going to come back down here to this one. And then I could do another one, for instance, and it may go a different way. So that's just another little trick. So if you have a bus stop on either side or a truck stop on either side, then you can actually just click on it when you make your route and the auto route will just go whichever route it so desires to get there. Otherwise, you may find that your traffic actually ends up doing a block of going around to try and get the right orientation, all that sort of stuff, or it'll just do U-turns. So it's just another little handy trick for placement. All right, so that's your bus stops, that's your truck stops, that's all your roads that are available when you first start out. Then we have the buildings that are available. Now, the buildings are actually really important as well because this is what actually is what's going to set you all up. So first off, we have the stops. So we have the the bus station, or bus and tram station, and then we have a truck station. So obviously the bus and the tram is used for doing passengers, and the truck is used for doing um, your freight. Now, as we've seen previously in other episodes, the other great thing about all these is they are modular. So if I'm looking here at my cargo truck stop, I can go to the configure button up here, and I can add extra modules, I can add extra entrances and all that sort of stuff. So if I want to add uh, extra cargo section to it i can extend the cargo out through there all well and good i can also if i wanted to it's already a cargo station but i may want to have passengers there as well i can add a passenger stop as well so now it's become a multi-faceted stop so i've got both trucks and buses in the one stop so i don't need no longer to have a bus stop or a truck stop and a bus stop to take up all that extra room fab fantastic now the other thing is too, to help with our traffic and all that sort of stuff, we have the option of putting in further street access. Now I can put a street access in here, which is dual way, so it's both in, in and outgoing, or I can put a one way street connection. Now, for instance, I can put an entrance only. So this one here, um, sorry, what's this one? Entrance only, yep, so I'm gonna put an entrance on there and the exit I'm gonna put here. So put the exit there. So traffic will flow in and flow out. So again, we can actually manage our traffic a little bit better by using our one-way entrance and exit only. All right, so that's fantastic. And that works both equally for the trucks and the buses, obviously. All right, next we have the depots. So we have the road depot and we have the tram depot. Fairly simple. The road depot is where we buy our vehicles. So the road depot, for instance, at the moment, we can buy a Troika for the passengers and we can buy an Asian horse-drawn carriage for the cargo, okay? As we progress through the ages, we obviously get all different uh, vehicles that we can buy. And then for the tram, similarly, we can buy the tram. Now, at the moment, it's a horse-drawn streetcar. Uh, later on, we can actually have that running um, with electric and all that sort of stuff. And as you can see here, the tram station comes by default with the catenary all set up, ready to go, okay? Now, if we were to go and set up our trams here on the bus station, exactly the same as the roads, we just come in here like this, we're going to come in, we're going to go to our streets, upgrade, put that in like that, and as you can see, it adds the tram tracks into the bus stop, okay? Nice and simple. Similarly, if we wanted to do it again, over here for the truck and bus stop, that's all done there. No, actually, no, it's not going to let me. There we go. Now it's there. Right. Just put them on the primary one. And there we go. So that's all in there ready to go. So that's fully ready for trams. Nice and easy. And that's all the stuff we start off with. Right. Now, if we were to progress further on, other things happen. So 
So we're going to jump to the year 2000 and we're going to see what our options are now. Okay. Now, obviously, we're going to get a whole pile of new vehicles. We're going to ignore that for now. You'll notice here, the first thing you'll notice straight away is I've got the street modification still selected and this has come up with the catenary, yes or no. What that's basically saying, do I want to put the catenary in at the same time? So, for instance, if I say, yes, I want to upgrade it, so I can upgrade the streets with tram tracks or I can upgrade the streets now with bus lanes, okay? So let's upgrade with bus lanes. So this one here, put the bus lanes in and that will now have a bus lane. It's not really visible there, actually. Um, let's see what we can do here. No, it's not really gonna show up, but there's just should be bus lanes there now and it should activate that accordingly. Now, also, if I wanna to go to the tram track tool, I can have the trams in here, and at the moment I've got catenary off, so it's not going to add the catenary, which is all well and good. If I go back in here again, turn the catenary on. Bob's your uncle, there it is. The catenary is in there, all ready to go. All right, simple as that. Right, so that's the first part. Now, in relation to actual streets and that that we have, obviously we have the ability to have, have both trams and bus lanes now. If we head back over here to our streets, we've now got a couple of extra options. So now we've not only got um, urban, we've got one way, we've got country. So urban and country, we're at a fault starting off. We've now got one way and we've got highway. So, and we've got more options over here. So if we come back just to our urban and we've got the basic roads available, we have a small street still, which is this one here. However, the speed limit's now 30 kilometers an hour, a medium street, now 50, so it's increased by 10 kilometers an hour. We have the four lane street, 60 kilometers an hour. Now that's exactly the same as that one up there. So pull that down through there. There we go. Same thing, but it's just got the lanes and that all marked out, okay? And then we also now have an extra large street, which is a six lane street with a speed limit of 60 kilometers an hour. So we'll just put him down here and there he goes. Okay, so you've got a really big city you've developed. It's really starting to grow. You can take out your two, one and two lane streets and start putting in these behemoths. You can have throughput, lots more traffic, all that sort of stuff. So that's fantastic. All right, what else have we got? One way streets, same thing. We could put in a one way street. So there's both a one lane, a two lane, and a three lane. So let's put the three lane one down. And there we go. That's a three lane, one way street. So then we can have, if we wanted to, we start setting things up like that and that's the way the traffic will work fantastic extra extra flexibility for you for your cities and all your, all your road networks we then have the country now the country has changed a little bit it's no longer a gravel road but we have the small country road two-lane road with a speed limit of 60 kilometers an hour and that's the same as what it was previously remember so there it is there that's the country road then we have the two-lane road with a speed limit of 80 which is a bit quicker we then have the four lane road with a speed limit of 100 kilometers an hour. Bit of an increase there as well. And then lastly, we have the six lane road with a speed limit of 100 kilometers an hour. And there we go there, so Bob your uncle. So that's the extra flexibility you now have in the basic roads. What we also have as well is we have the highway. So the highway gives us the option to have a standard one lane, like so. We have a two lane, a two lane one way highway, like so. And then we have a three lane one way highway. Okay. Now obviously the speeds of these are 60, 80 and 100, which I was remiss in telling you as we were laying it. But you've also still got the options, as you can see here, we can either have bus lane, keep, no or yes. Tram track, keep, no, yes or electric. So if I go back in here, well actually I'll just do another one down here. I want to do a large highway, but this time I want to have a bus lane. So we'll put this next to this one here so we can just see the difference. Bring him down. There we go. And you can immediately see you have a bus lane. So this left hand lane here, as you're looking at it, is now a bus lane. Now, similarly, if I want to keep the bus lane and I also want to have a tram track and I want to have it electric, I can do that. So I can bring that down through there. And there we have my three lane highway with a bus lane and a tram track. So traffic going down through here, two lanes will be prioritized for traffic. This lane here will be prioritized for buses and trams. And again, I can then do it without it being electric. So tram track, yes, but not electric. 
So if I put this one in here as well. And then we have a bus lane and tram lane, but no catenary, so it's not electric. Okay. So lovely flexibility in with your roadworks there. All right. But that's not all. And it comes with some steak knives. No, what we get, we also get some street constructions. Now, there's three options here by default. Now, there are obviously going to be modders that hopefully will create different intersections that for us. And this is getting into a bit of a, a city skylines type feel. Uh, it's giving you extra flexibility. So for instance, this one, we've got a roundabout. So we can put a roundabout down. Now, the advantage with this, and this is one of the great things with this new version of Transport Fever, the flexibility, the modular building, all that sort of stuff is fantastic. So we've got an option for a roundabout. Now we can have a number of lanes. We can have one, two, or three. So there's a one lane roundabout in the smallest radius. All right, so I'll just put that down there like that. So that's the one lane, smallest radius roundabout. I can then go two lanes, like so. I can then go three lanes, like so. And then I can change the radius to as big or as small as I like. So I want a bigger roundabout, I can go there like that. If I want a huge roundabout, I go like that. Uh, I can't sit right. All right. There. So that's the options you have there with the roundabout. And that's great. Extra flexibility and all that yet again, which is fantastic. As you can see here, we've also put down some other of our uh, options. So we have a T intersection. And again, we have options. Two lane or three lane with a small, medium or large. That's the small, that's the medium and the large. Actually, no, that was the, the large and there's the medium. Not a lot of difference in size, but you get the idea. And lastly, we have the clover leaf interchange, and this is a behemoth, as you can see here. So it's over here. Uh, again, two lane or three lane option, a small, so that's small. I'll go over here, we've got a bit more room. There's a small one, there's the medium, and then there's the large. Oh, got a collision, there we go. Okay, so that is the road options that are available to you by default in Transport Fever 2. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you're excited by the different amount of road flexibility and, and that you have with your Transport Fever 2 builds. This is a fantastic game. It is available on the 12th of December in Australia, 11th of December in Europe and the Americas and I strongly suggest and recommend that you grab this game when you get a chance, pre-order it before it comes out so you get the discounted price, 25% off for those that already own Transport Fever and 10% off for others for pre-order. Uh, it is available off Steam and I think you can't go wrong with this game. But there you go. That is the road building tools available to you for Transport Fever 2. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, press the like button. If you didn't, that's okay, but you come back for the next one. And as always, if you're not already a subscriber to the channel, please consider subscribing for more Transport Fever 2 videos. And don't forget to press that alarm notification icon so you're made aware of when more videos are available on the channel. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you all again very, very soon back here on Transport Fever 2. See you later. Bye.